Hey all, I'm Eric Christensen, your host of the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. Thanks for listening today. Uh, today I'm going to cover clonidine, uh, but first, you know, many of you asked how to reach out to you and, and that type of thing, so um, LinkedIn is probably a, a great way to do that. I'm, I'm on LinkedIn fairly regularly. Uh, if you want to shoot me a message there, that's certainly okay, or, or connect, that's uh, just fine as well. Um, check out reallifepharmacology.com. There's a contact button. Uh, certainly you can email me with you know questions, comments, things of, of that nature as well for uh, future episodes or if you're looking for additional resources, materials, uh, I'm certainly uh, available or try to answer as many emails as I can. Uh, so with that, uh, let's shift into the drug of the day, clonidine. Now this uh, is a drug that's classified, I would guess, traditionally as a an antihypertensive. At least that's where I've probably seen it used most often. Uh, but it is a little bit of a uh, jack of all trades, where I've seen it used for a variety of different reasons, which I'll, I'll get into. Uh, so brand name of clonidine, uh, catapress is what you're going to hear. Um, in practice used, if you hear a brand name used, I would say uh, most clinicians, providers, pharmacists I've worked with uh, simply just use the generic older name clonidine because it is an older drug. It's been around for a really long time. Now from a mechanism of action standpoint, this drug uh, works a little bit differently than some of the other traditional um, blood pressure medication. This one actually acts in the central nervous system and it's considered an alpha-2 uh, agonist. So it stimulates alpha-2 receptors in the central nervous system, or CNS. And what that does is that reduces sympathetic outflow. Now, if you remember sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, that sympathetic side of things is that fight-or-flight response. So if we reduce that, we're going to reduce blood pressure, reduce heart rate, and things of that nature. So if we remember that we reduce sympathetic nervous system, we're going to cause a reduction in blood pressure, and there the classification of the drug clonidine fits. So the blood pressure lowering effect, that can obviously be used to our advantage. One of its uses is used in hypertension, which I mentioned. Uh, uniquely, uh, this drug I have seen it used for uh, ADHD, so attention deficit hyperactive disorder. So another kind of unique use there. Uh, the mechanism of how that works and um, exactly why that works, I don't think is very well understood. Uh, another uh, indication that I've seen it used for off-label, uh, opioid withdrawal. Um, helping manage some of those symptoms. Um, also menopause type symptoms, hot flashes. Uh, there maybe is some uh, modest, mild evidence in favor of that as well. Sticking on hypertension, clonidine is typically uh, dosed as an oral tablet, dosed twice a day. Uh, in rare situations, I maybe have seen it dosed three times a day. Uh, but typically just twice a day. Uh, uniquely, there is an alternative dosage form with clonidine, which definitely differentiates itself from other blood pressure-lowering medications. So there is a transdermal form of clonidine that is applied uh, once a week. So kind of a, a unique uh, niche there, I guess, um, because there really aren't any uh, transdermal uh, blood pressure lowering medications other than clonidine. Now, if you've been in practice for a little while, or maybe you're starting to see medications used, you're getting some experience, you'll probably notice that clonidine isn't used a lot in blood pressure as an antihypertensive. And the reason being is because it does have a significant amount of adverse drug reactions. And I think you could imagine that a drug acting in the central nervous system probably isn't that great of thing, or it leads to the potential of uh, central nervous system side effects. And indeed, clonidine does that. So fatigue, 
is definitely very common. Uh, dizziness. Uh, there are uh, rare situations where there can be mood altering effects. Uh, maybe a acute delirium type situation. And those effects are going to be more prominent in our elderly patients. And clonidine has actually um, historically been on the beers list as well. Um, that's uh, inappro potentially inappropriate drugs in the, the elderly. So those central nervous system type side effects really kind of limit its use, uh, particularly in our elderly patients because they, they can be problematic. One really common side effect that I've seen uh, in practice is dry mouth. And actually, there is um, maybe an off-label utilization of clonidine uh, that it can help manage excessive salvation. Uh, from antipsychotics and clozapine specifically is uh, mentioned in the, the literature there. So, um, again, very common side effect, um, dry mouth can happen with clonidine. Now, with that blood pressure lowering effect and that reduced sympathetic activity, you got to think about pulse as well. So, if we block sympathetic activity, it's going to lower blood pressure and it's going to lower pulse. So that can be problematic, and I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit um, when we're paying attention to, to drug interactions as well. Uh, there is the possibility of rebound hypertension if this drug is abruptly discontinued. So think about you know your patients that maybe they're off and on as far as their adherence goes, or if they are on a higher dose and you know, maybe they can't get access to the drug for some reason or they forgot it or they're on a trip or something like that. Uh, if you're working with that patient, you got to recognize that stopping that um, clonidine abruptly can cause a significant re-increase or, or rebound in uh, hypertension. If you're looking for board exam material, NAPLEX, pharmacotherapy, geriatrics, ambulatory care, if you're looking for a good book to read on clinical pharmacology that's full of case studies, I've got a couple of those available. Remember, you can get your free uh, Audible book, your first one for free, on audible.com. I've got links uh, for all these resources at meded101.com slash store. So if you want to go support the podcast, go check out meded101.com slash store. Now with drug interactions... I typically remember drugs that are going to do similar things and potentially have cumulative effects to the effects that clonidine can cause. So first one I, I kind of think about is uh, blood pressure and pulse. So first off with pulses, uh, I think about those drugs that are going to also cause bradycardia and lower pulse. So we've got uh, beta blockers, for example, a good example of a drug that can lower pulse. If we add clonidine on top of a beta blocker or vice versa, beta blocker on top of clonidine, we do have to pay attention uh, to make sure we don't knock down that pulse too far. Another example, non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers. So your diltiazems, your verapamils, they act on the heart. They reduce that heart rate and can kind of have this cumulative effect with clonidine. Uh, one more example, digoxin. It's got the potential to suppress that heart, heart rate. Uh, you know, all these drugs are, are commonly used in atrial fibrillation to purposefully um, control that heart rate. Uh, but those uh, three definitely uh, can contribute to bradycardia and adding clonidine on top of that uh, may worsen that. So we got to gotta keep an eye out for that. Uh, CNS depressants, um, I think of opioids, I think of uh, benzodiazepines, I think of drugs that can cause sedation like um, older anticholinergics or um, Z drugs like Ambien and things of that nature. So any type of CNS depressant, you got to remember that clonidine has this type of effect as well and it can potentially um, cause that patient to have excessive amounts of sedation, confusion, and, and things of that nature. So uh, important to remember that as well. And then obviously blood pressure, you know, if we've got um, multiple antihypertensives or if we know that a patient um, has had trouble with 
orthostasis, hypotension, you've got to recognize that clonidine is going to uh, add on to that effect. So think about blood pressure meds and you know maybe not so commonly thought of um, other agents such as uh, levodopa, for example, that can lower blood pressure. Uh, maybe in our, our male patients, our uh, PDE5 inhibitors, so uh, Viagra's, uh, Sildenafil, generic name there, uh, that those agents can lower blood pressure as well. So we got, got to think about some of these agents and the effect we're, we're going to have. If we're using clonidine to lower blood pressure purposefully, obviously we're going to be monitoring blood pressure. However, if we're using clonidine for uh, opioid withdrawal, or for you know ADHD or something like that, you know we've got to recognize that um, it is going to have that blood pressure lowering effect as well. And then dry mouth, you know, a cumulative effect there. Uh, some of those older anticholinergics, your Benadryls, your uh, tricyclic antidepressants, which I've got another podcast on. Uh, so amitriptyline, nortriptyline. You've got to remember that these agents can have that cumulative uh, dry mouth effect. So I think that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. Uh, get your snag your free 31-page PDF on the top 200 drugs. Great resource for students uh, and healthcare professionals preparing for board exams. Uh, also support our sponsor, meded101.com slash store. Uh, greatly appreciated there. And yeah, go snag that. If you've never listened to an audiobook. book, um, definitely go snag your, your fir- first book for free. Uh, on audible.com it's a kind of a, a no-brainer uh, pharmacotherapy and the thrill of the case again find those links right at meded101.com slash store uh, enjoy that book for free six seven hours of content um, my preference would be the thrill of the case um, i think that's a little bit more well done uh, but pharmacotherapy <laughs> has been the um, kind of mainstay and um, people have found that uh book very entertaining and um, educational as well of course thanks for listening if you'd love to leave us a a rating review on itunes uh, greatly appreciated Um, thanks in in advance for for doing that take care have a great rest of your day